All right, folks, we finally have some pretty cool news and an update about OpenAI Strawberry. In case you missed it, I recommend uh, checking out the previous video where we talked about Strawberry and OpenAI's new AI, Orion. So you can get up to date on what we're talking about here. Anyway, guys, this video is jam-packed with info, so stick around. We're going to cover some really cool stuff like the release date of Strawberry to how it will be integrated with ChatGPT's new interface. Not to mention the details on its reasoning abilities and much more. So I'm going to be breaking down exactly what makes Strawberry so special, including its fresh take on reasoning and how it stands apart from earlier models. We'll see its technical specs, how it connects with ChatGPT and any potential changes in pricing. Plus, we'll get into the challenges Strawberry might face and its intriguing backstory, including its ties to artificial general intelligence and the star method. And, of course, we'll touch on the latest rumors and speculation about what's in store for its future features and applications. Oh, there's a lot, so let's get started. So OpenAI is about to drop its latest model, codenamed Strawberry, and it's coming even sooner than we actually expected. Within the next two weeks, everybody. And let's kick things off by getting into what Strawberry is all about. Basically, this is OpenAI's newest AI model, and it's bringing a whole new level of reasoning and problem solving to the game. It was originally expected to launch in the fall, but this model is now dropping ahead of schedule, and the tech world is buzzing with excitement because, unlike its predecessors, Strawberry isn't just focusing on giving you fast answers, but it's all about digging deep into reasoning and analytical thinking. So while previous models like GPT-4 and GPT-4.0 were known for their lightning-fast responses, Strawberry is a bit more, um, it's a bit more deliberate because it takes its time, about 10 to 20 seconds, to process a question before responding. Now, that might seem a little bit slow, but the goal here is to deliver more accurate and thoughtful answers, especially when tackling complex problems. Now, as I've said in previous videos, I really believe that getting mediocre, if not outright incorrect results in 0.5 seconds, it, it just doesn't make sense. So for exactly that reason, why would an AI model intentionally take longer to respond? Well, folks, the reason is pretty interesting because by slowing down its process, Strawberry is aiming to cut down on errors and boost the quality of its responses, especially for tasks that need multi-step reasoning like uh, tackling complex math problems, crafting detailed business plans, or even writing code. And basically, this approach could make a huge difference in its overall performance. Now, Strawberry will be integrated into OpenAI's ChatGPT platform, but it's going to function as a standalone option within that setup. And what this means is that users will be able to choose Strawberry from a list of available models in the ChatGPT interface. Just like now, in the same way, we can choose between GPT-4.0, GPT-4.0 Mini, and so on and so forth. Then, while we don't have the exact details on how users will access it just yet, it looks like people will be selecting Strawberry based on what they specifically need. As for pricing, folks, there's a lot of buzz around Strawberry, introducing a unique structure compared to the current GPT models. So instead of being free or sticking to the usual subscription model, there's talk that it might have a pricing tier that limits how many messages you can send per hour. And there's even speculation that there could be a premium option for those who want quicker responses or more features. But for now, it seems like existing ChatGPT subscribers might get early access before it opens up to free users. Anyway, folks, you should know that even with its advanced features, Strawberry isn't without some drawbacks because to start, it's only going to handle text-based queries when it launches. And, you know, that's a bit of a step back from GPT-4.0, which can handle both text and images thanks to its multimodal abilities. And some early testers have pointed out that Strawberry's slow response time for simpler queries doesn't always seem worth the wait. Plus, while Strawberry is designed to remember past conversations for more personalized interactions, it's had some trouble being consistent with that. 
So basically, one of the big challenges Strawberry faces is finding the right balance between its reasoning power and the user experience because, you know, the longer processing time is great for complex questions, but it could be frustrating for users who are used to getting quick responses. And on top of that, the model's ability to maintain context over longer conversations is still being tested. And that could play a big role in how useful it really is in everyday applications. Now, folks, if you remember, before Strawberry officially got its name, it was actually called QSTAR or Q-STAR. And the development of this model didn't happen without some drama at OpenAI because just before OpenAI CEO Sam Altman was briefly ousted last year, Q became a major point of contention and some researchers at OpenAI were worried that Q represented a big step towards creating artificial general intelligence. Their concern was that developing such advanced models so quickly could lead to risks that we haven't fully thought through. AGI, or Artificial General Intelligence, refers to AI that can understand, learn, and apply knowledge across many tasks, just like a human. The idea of AGI is both exciting and a bit concerning because while it could bring huge advancements, it might also come with unexpected risks. There's speculation that AGI could evolve in ways we can't predict, leading to scenarios that sound like something out of science fiction, like Skynet from the Terminator movies. Basically, the fear is that if AGI systems become too advanced too fast, we could face some unintended consequences. But, you know, I also think the situation probably isn't as apocalyptic as it's being made out to be. As a viewer pointed out in one of our last videos, a lot of these dynamics can probably be chalked up to the hype train effect. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. Every time, for instance, some scandal happens at OpenAI or a whistleblower says it's a bit too much, somehow, mysteriously, OpenAI stock goes up. So I'll leave the final word to you guys. Beyond that, we also need to seriously consider the current limitations of LLMs and the infamous debate about whether AGI will arrive next year or in 10 years is still relevant in my opinion. Anyway guys, one of Strawberry's standout features is its use of what's called System 2 thinking because this concept introduced by psychologist Daniel Kahneman in his book Thinking, Fast and Slow describes a slow, deliberate mode of thinking, and it's different from system one thinking, which is quick, intuitive, and often emotional. Strawberry aligns with system two thinking by focusing on careful analysis and reasoning before giving a response, because the goal here is to boost accuracy and cut down on mistakes, especially for tasks that need a deeper level of thought. Now, because of this, I want to tell you about an interesting connection between Strawberry and the concept called STAR, or self-taught reasoner. Basically, STAR is a method designed to boost the reasoning skills of AI models through a process of iterative learning and self-improvement. And the main idea behind STAR is to take a small set of examples that show step-by-step -step reasoning and use that foundation to apply the knowledge to a much larger data set. So folks, here's how STAR works. It starts with a small set of examples that clearly lay out step-by-step -step reasoning. And from there, the model uses this base knowledge to tackle a larger data set. Then the process kicks off by generating rationales for a wide range of questions. And these rationales are then carefully filtered to make sure they're accurate. And only the ones that lead to correct answers are kept. Then the model is then fine-tuned using these filtered rationales, improving its ability to give accurate responses. This process is repeated over and over, allowing the AI to learn from its reasoning and keep getting better with time. Then there's also an optional step called rationalization, where if the model gets a question wrong, it's given hints and asked to come up with the right rationale. Essentially, this helps it to learn from its mistakes and sharpen its reasoning even more. Now folks, like with any big tech release, there are plenty of rumors and speculation floating around about Strawberry because some industry insiders are hinting that Strawberry's advanced reasoning abilities could just be the start. There's talk about potential features and updates that might roll out after its launch. So, for example, some believe that future versions of Strawberry could include multimodal capabilities, 
meaning it wouldn't just handle text, but could also process images, audio, and maybe even video. Then, and this is pretty neat, there's also a buzz around the idea of Strawberry being integrated with other AI models, and some sources are suggesting that OpenAI could be working on merging Strawberry with other projects like Orion to create even more powerful and versatile AI systems. Orion, which has been developed alongside Strawberry, is rumored to be a next-gen language model that uses synthetic data generated from Strawberry's capabilities. Again, don't miss the video where we take a little deep dive into Orion, folks. So Strawberry is definitely a major step forward in the journey towards smarter, more advanced AI systems. But whether it will live up to the hype remains to be seen. But you know, I guess it's clear OpenAI is setting its sights high with this one. That's it, folks. Let me know what you think about these updates on OpenAI Strawberry. Are you convinced so far or do you have any doubts or concerns? Uh, you know where to put them. Comments are down below. Hit that like button and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. If you didn't like the video, give us a big old thumbs down. Tell us where we went wrong. And as always, see you in the next one, folks. You all take care.